Hey guys, welcome to part two of my loudspeaker trip. Just to recap, in part one, I'll link below, I bought speakers, a Blue Sound power node, and a subwoofer. We didn't get along that well. So in this video, I attempt to address those shortcomings and somehow get things to sound better. Before we begin, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Chibs, and I review stuff that gets me fired up. Lately, it's all been hi-fi related, and I have a lot to unpack here. Everything we talk about today is my own experience and not influenced or sponsored in any way. Now, YouTube didn't help that much the first go around, so I decide to go old school. I pick up a phone and I call some hi-fi stores with my problem. Not just the local ones either. I call all over the country to get a good baseline. Do these guys have biased opinions? Of course, but for the most part, they bring some great insight. Right off the bat, I got Kef LS50s need more power to be driven properly. But my power node gets them really loud, I explain. Well, loud isn't the same thing as getting driven properly. Me being cynical, I think, sure, this guy makes his money, 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 and I end up in the exact same predicament, not happening. I call around and more often than not, I get the exact same story. So maybe these guys are right, but I refuse to just buy on recommendation anymore. As I still want to keep things relatively simple, I start looking at integrated amps again. And one of the companies that kept popping up was Hegel. More expensive, sure, but people seem to rave about them both on YouTube and audio forms alike. So I go to Hegel's webpage and look up dealers here in Canada. I find Audio Excellence listed here and they happen to be in my city. I actually subscribe to their YouTube channel and Hang on, give me, give me a sec, I gotta I got take this. Hello? Villop, what is happening? Villop, I need some help. It's my speakers. They sound like shit. As good as the power node is, it is not designed to something, it designed something that requires that is that is it, the, because the LS50 is a very demanding speaker from a, an impedance standpoint. Um, so it's you know cons considered a difficult load. It has fairly low impedance, and then it jumps all over the place. And before you know it, your amplifier is struggling because it can't meet all the uh, demands of the speaker. But the speaker is asking, well, you know, it's reacting to what's being given to it, and then. What's being given to it is just not sufficient. As well as it's spec'd out, just doesn't have enough instantaneous ability to deliver enough current. And it lags, so you hear that. It sounds sluggish and slow. It, yeah, but it's not just slow, it was um, shrill and digital and anemic and like not... Well, that's all because it's sluggish and slow, so that's the majority part of it is is whenever you have timing errors, which happens when you don't have enough current available when, you, when, when it's required, it, 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 it compromises itself and uh, you, lose, you lose some of that information. When you lose the information, it, is, it, 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 just, it doesn't sound right. That's basically what's going on. It's like there's a whole bunch of stuff that works better, works on time when there's enough current. But essentially, yeah. even though that they say that the, the the power node, you know, should work with everything, and it did essentially work, it's just not working enough. It's not doing enough it's like the Hegel is. fast enough. It's not capable of. It cannot scale big enough as quickly as better designs. Gotcha. So the Hegel can do all those things much better. Bye. There we go. So Villop in great detail reiterates what basically everyone else kept telling me. Where were all these opinions before I got my power node? Anyhow, he even goes one step further by telling me to bring in my own metas and hook them up to their Hegel. Okay, COVID restrictions aren't as crazy at this point, so I do. Finally, an actual proper speaker demo. I'm getting excited here. I pack up my Kef LS50 Metas in their original box and drive down. So as I get there, Philip leads me into one of their listening rooms where the Hegel H120 and two speaker stands are ready for my Kefs. 
Now, this is a much larger sound-treated room, and it's got me thinking that these little kefs will probably get swallowed up. But after hooking them up and testing a track, these concerns completely vanished. These things sound huge now. Later on, we tried the Hegel H190, and I really like what I heard, but could this be the room and the way it was treated? What I probably should have done was brought the Blue Sound Power Node to directly compare to the Hegel, but those metas were such a pain to box up. I got a little overwhelmed, and I didn't fully think that part through. Anyhow, I enjoyed what I was hearing, and that was the important takeaway here. Also got a chance to play with Rune on their iPad Mini. I now get why a lot of you swear by it. Really polished and intuitive interface, with all these extra details about the band and the albums. From a software standpoint, this was pretty much the best streaming I've ever experienced. But I digress. So, okay, I think to myself. I like what I hear, obviously, but this could be the room and the way it's set up. Philip suggests that I actually take home a demo model for the weekend so I can compare against the power node and see how it sounds in my habitat. Seriously? I leave a deposit on their loaner machine and Angus helps me put it in the trunk of my car. Amazing. Are you starting to see why brick and mortar stores like this are so freaking useful and important? To me, this was such a cool thing to offer. I honestly wish more stores could do this. Inspired by Audio Excellence's setup, I covered some of my reflective surfaces with sheepskin rugs. I started listening to the power node and switched back and forth with the Hegel. I used an app on my phone to make sure that I was listening to both at the same volume level, and here's what I found. I started with Our House by CSNY. It sounded much larger on the Hegel. I'm enjoying this more. Fuck, <laughs> this is going to cost me. I'm just reading this out loud. My life, imagine dragons. I'm in a trance. The amp is seducing me, and it's not sharp at all like it was on the Blue Sound Power Note. Then Saturday by Chicago, more real and organic. Symbols are lifelike. Instrument separation is on point and soundstage. Big difference there. Starman, David Bowie. Bass is flippin' punchy. Stage is much wider, not upsetting my ears with the treble. My Ella's 50s at this point had been upgraded. I did some more songs. King Harvest, Dancing in the Moonlight. Awesome. <laughs> the Chain by Fleetwood Mac, the 2002 remaster. Towards the end, I got up and I danced and I was by myself and seriously did the cars, just what I needed. Very fun, fantastic speed. True Love's Kiss, the piano sounds just lifelike and amazing. Did some Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Everything I'm listening to, I'm just enjoying more and more. And in contrast, it's just crazy how different things sound with the Hegel. This is a huge upgrade for me, but I wanted some more opinions. Welcome. Thank you. This is Mrs. Chibs. Hi. It's my wife. So, Mrs. Chibs loves music, right? I do. You listen to it a lot. I listen to music on my phone and my computer. <laughs> Nothing special, but it works. And radio in the car. And yeah. Okay. So she's not into hi-fi. No. Let's just put it that way. Not at all. So when I, got, when I got you to agree. Finally, yes. To come into my office and test the speakers, she was adamant that I did she, not didn't, want to. she didn't want to. Because I don't really care. I listen to it on my phone and it's just fine. Doesn't care. Doesn't care. I care. I don't know. He cares. I'm sure you guys care too, so. <laughs> but whatever. So you come into my office and we listen to, the, what was the first song we listened to? The first one was Meatloaf. Um, what was the song? Uh, I, the best song. I can do anything I for can love. I can do anything for love. But I won't do that. I won't do that either. So we listened to it on the Blue Sound first. It was okay. It was um, obviously better than my usual phone speakers. And then we listened to it on the, uh, what's it called? Hegel. The Hegel. We switched. We A-B'd. And it was like out of the world, out of this world. So. So there was a huge difference. Very big difference. And I think it was um, five or six minutes in, I... I well, I think first I asked you if it was live, and then you said no, and yeah. then... she thought it was a different track 
all together, and then I pulled up a live version of the song. Yeah, I wasn't convinced. Which it was the exact same track yeah. that I played on the Blue Sound Power. So it sounded amazing. Um, basically, it was like close your eyes and they're right there playing for you. It was so crisp and clean and it was just the best that I've ever heard it. And yep. I've listened to it hundreds, hundreds of times. Yeah, it says around, my notes are around six minutes in, she turns to me and says, are you sure this isn't live? Yeah, I was not convinced. That was funny and indicative of the difference um, that you get right. between the two amps. One being the Blue Sound Power Node, the other being the Hegel H190 hooked up to a Denifritz Pontus II. That was the difference. And I think I also brought up the the setup that you had was so, um, the sound of it, it just, I envisioned you being at like a wedding and like it could take over the room and sound just as good. So in a big venue? In a big venue, absolutely. It just, yeah. It sounded um, amazing. <laughs> it, no, it really did. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay, so then you wanted to hear what a, what don't, a shit... N no, it wasn't shit. I don't, I don't remember calling it shit. She said, I, I want to hear a shitty song to see how the speakers I think I was doing work. shitty, like this. Like, it's not really shitty. Like, not as well produced. Not as good as, like, Meatloaf. Like, you, it's very hard to have that kind of caliber. Right. And Ed Sheeran is still very good. So she wanted to play an Ed Sheeran song, which was... Um, it was the Castle in the Clouds, Castle in the Sky. I forget the I name, know. but it was it's a very good song. I'm sure Ed you guys Sheeran know so, it. So well. And it sounded... It still sounded very good, but when you're comparing it to Meatloaf, I mean, you, you can't. So... But okay. it still sounded very good. On the Hegel. On the... Yes. Okay. And then we listened to uh, Peter Gabriel, In Your Eyes, one of my top five songs. Right. And amazing. Oh, my God. I, got, I, I, got, I just got goosebumps thinking about it. It was so good. And then when we switch back to the Blue Sound Power Node. Um, like I was listening to speakers in your office. Which versus? Is like being at a concert. Huge, huge, huge difference. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I've got notes here that the blue sound, it, it feels like the blue sound would get lost in a huge room, whereas yes. the Hegel would not. No. Those were your remarks. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. So yeah, so there is, a, there is a huge discernible difference, not just for me, but for you as well, between the two mm -hmm. amps and DAX as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming here. And I know it was a long commute downstairs. The biggest I've ever had. <laughs> and thank you for your... You're welcome. I have a new um, appreciation for these kinds of things. So then let's so, go listen to music downstairs now. I... Just a little bit. I'm good. Just one song. I got my phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll wrap it there. All right. High five. All right. All right. So given the positive experience I had at Audio Excellence and then later on in my small office, I went and did a thing that caused me some grief. I'll get into that more later. I decided I want to hear how this system sounds in a larger room. I schlep everything downstairs to my media room and set up both amps with the metas. My friend Andy joins me this time around and offers up his opinion. So we start with Steve Miller Band, Take the Money and Run. He said that the Hegel sounded way less muddied. Then checked out CSNY, Cathedral. A lot clearer on the Hegel. Soundstage is much better. Definitely the drums and bass are clearer and crisp on the Hegel. Then we went with Nina Simone, Sinnerman. He said the separation wasn't as good on the Blue Sound Power Node, and it was also more muddled. He then went on to explain that the Power Node made my kefs sound like they were playing out of two separate speakers whereas the H190 was making the room sound like there was basically a band in it, which I thought was really cool. And finally, we AB'd with LA Woman by the Doors. Here, Andy asks if it was the exact same track once we got to the Hegel. I had to prove it to him by showing him the same album cover. It totally was. 
He said it felt like he was right there. And this was indicative of the difference we were experiencing here each and every time. Editing this video now, I had to point out how crazy parallel both of their experiences were here. There was no discussion as to how these amps sounded beforehand. And all of these reactions were completely candid. So it was really interesting that both of them came to the same conclusion and thought that the Hegel had a different or a live version of the exact same song, which it, it didn't. Anyways, back to the video. We give up a being and just go on with the Hegel and enjoy ourselves and hang out, talk and listen to music. This was fun. Let's talk about Hegel's built-in streaming. Forget about the node for a second. The H190 has a streamer baked into it, sort of. With this, I can potentially keep my node in my office with my headphone rig and just use the H190 by itself in the media room. Unfortunately, there are a few catches here. H190 doesn't have Wi-Fi internally. It does have an ethernet port though, so the good news is I'm able to hook that up with a Wi-Fi extender hub, which was already right next to my TV anyways. Number two, I'll have to rely on the Hegel H190's own internal DAC, which is fine for the most part. To my ears, it sounds better than the Blue Sound Nodes DAC, but not nearly as good as Pontus 2, if I'm honest. So this has me a bit conflicted here. Number three, there's no Amazon Music support. I'm limited to using Apple Music here in AirPlay 1, and that converts everything and maxes out at CD quality, which is 16-bit 44. AirPlay 2 is better, and in Hegel's crosshairs for a future update. I believe that they'll do this as they recently put an update for Rune integration, where it actually outputs at a much higher bit rate than AirPlay. Man, I really want Rune. There's no way I'm going back to Tidal though, so Kobuz, I'm looking at you joining us here in Canada. Call me. <laughs> Seriously, I, I want you to call me, please. Number four, walking out of the room streaming Apple from my phone, the music will just stop. This is a AirPlay 1 limitation and just obnoxious in my opinion. But how does H190 streaming sound? Pretty good actually, but it's quirky. It doesn't always want to connect right away. If I try to get to a certain timestamp in a song or change tracks a lot, it just gets confused and stops working. I'll then have to refine H190 on my network and connect again. I'm not sure how much of this is because I'm connected to a Wi-Fi hub and not directly to my main router. I will say that I stream 4K movies down here without issue, so take that for what it is. So I'm going to put this nice and simple. Blue Sound's node trounces the H190 for streaming. Ease of use, features, and sound quality are all noticeably better here. But I can honestly see someone getting by with the H190 and just living with its quirks, especially if they haven't tried the node, or if they use Rune. But it doesn't look like I want to rely on Hegel as a one-and-done solution. The easy fix for me is just adding a node here. Having said all that, here's what I find really interesting. That day two demo was done streaming Apple Music through AirPlay 1 directly to the Hegel using its internal DAC, not my Pontus. So the Hegel was at a complete disadvantage only getting 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz, whereas the power node was full bit perfect high resolution through Amazon Music. Even with this handicap, the H190 destroyed my Blue Sound power node. So my takeaway here is Hegel's amplification makes a much bigger difference than high resolution through a bit perfect source. Let's quickly talk about damping factor. No, it's not that. Damping factor is the amplifier's ability to control speaker motion once a signal has stopped. This is most noticeable at lower frequencies. A high damping factor results in a tighter, more controlled bass, which can be more engaging. A low damping factor results in soft bass, which is obviously less engaging. One of Hegel's selling points is having a very high damping factor. While most amps are below 200, the H190 is 4000. So where does this leave me? Well, at this point, I have this borrowed piece of equipment in my house, and I don't want to give it back. It fixes most of the shortcomings I had with power node and metas, and most importantly, I want to listen to speakers now. So at the end of this epic weekend demo, I had to pack up the H190 and throw it in my car and drive it back to Audio Excellence. This was kind of bittersweet. I was pretty reluctant to give it back to them. And when it came 
to handing it to them, I almost didn't want to let go. It's just, no, no. It was one of those. Um, it was awkward. I'm not going to lie. But uh, it's fine. I bought one just right there and then. I couldn't not have this in my life. It's just too flipping good. Um, and that was that. So Mr. Chips wins. Going off on a bit of a tangent here, so stay with me. In my last video, someone kept commenting to say that they worked in the industry and sold tons of LS50 PowerNode packages to their customers. My reply was, cool, what do you listen with? They never even replied to that comment. Just went on to say how amazingly popular they were. These are the guys I'd honestly try and avoid. Now, go ahead and ask someone like Villop what he listens to at home, and I guarantee you'll get an earful. So... In my opinion, good audiophile brick and mortar stores make a huge difference. Do their employees profit from sales? Of course, but everyone's got to put food on the table. In my recent experience, folks like Villop are in this field simply because they love it. This speaks volumes as to why they're so successful. They do what they love. I'm singling out Audio Excellence here because all their guys, including Adrian the owner, are completely like-minded in that way. Not to sound corny, but I get a sense that they genuinely want to see their customers enjoy what they end up buying. And that's me right now. So I'd like to thank you guys. In the end, I can confidently say that all those brick and mortar store guys were pretty much bang on. I listen to my loudspeaker setup now voluntarily. I'm drawn to it. I seriously, it calls me. There's no ear fatigue. I just enjoy myself. I have fun listening to music from loudspeakers. Those KEF LS50 metas, they need good power from an ABM. Some of you guys in the comments section, you called it. Uh, Joey G, almost right away, <laughs> tells me I need a good ABM. Bang on. It's true. Now I feel like all of that hype that I got from YouTube over the KEF LS50 metas, well deserved. It, they are really, they're amazing speakers. And my system, is just freaking amazing now. So I'm pretty happy about that. So are we done here? Nope, not so much, unfortunately. During the chaos, my Pontus II pooched. It happened after it was moved down here in my media room and I didn't bang it, I didn't drop it. It just would not turn on. Okay, stay calm. I unplug it, I plug it back in and makes a click. Then it either stays on standby or a bunch of lights end up turning on and dancing around. I can't change inputs when this happens. It's basically dead to me. It's fucking dead. I couldn't help but notice the irony in this because I was just in the beginning stages of filming a Pontus II review. Pontus II, the best DAC that left me. Empty. Very, very sad. So guess what? That's right. Part three is happening. And with that, you'll get to see how the Denifrips repair program works. So make sure you're subscribed and leave a like to help the channel. And I will see you guys in part three where we talk lots about DAX. Thanks for watching, guys. See you then. Anything else you'd like to add? Miss Chip, Mrs. Chibs? Mrs. Uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, thanks for bringing me on. Oh, I appreciate having you. We were supposed to have Neil Young, but I don't know him. Don't know him. I don't personally know Neil Young. I think he passed away. What? No, he didn't. Neil Young did not pass away. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> he is very much alive and kicking. Neil Young, if you're watching, you, I don't know. You, you, you keep with it, buddy. You. Don't you go dying on us. She's totally wrong. Please, sir, don't take it the wrong way. We really like you. You like Neil Young. Of course. I... You're still questioning whether he's alive. Oh, my God. Neil Young is very much alive. She's Googling it. Go ahead, Google. Okay. Um, Neil Young... If he were dead, he'd be rolling in his grave right now, but he is very much alive. Yes. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I'm right, proved it on tape. Please don't put that in. <laughs> oh, it's going in. <laughs>
And I will see you guys in part three where we get our DAC on. Need some awesome music for the <laughs> it would It would uh, do very well. It would not get lost in the room. You need to get lost in the room, buddy. <laughs> You're a good boy. Go lie down in your bed. Um, the other speakers, or sorry, the other, um, is it speakers? Get on my DAC for part three. Digital audio conversion. Not your knee. That's for me. You see? The B. Letter T. <laughs> oh dear. Goodbye.